trying to keep this entire video super short. You clicked on this video because you want to learn more about Escape from Tarkov. You either bought the game or you're thinking about buying the game. This video is going to be telling you everything you need to know of what to expect or what to do, how to play the game. If you bought the game, perfect. If not, you want to go to escapefromtarkov.com. There's going to be four options that you can buy. There's a standard version that's $45 USD and the highest edition of the game, Edge of Darkness, aka EOD, $140 USD. I would recommend just get the standard version of the game. Once you fall in love with the game, like most people do within the first week or so, you'll probably upgrade to the $140 version and the $45 is deducted from the $140. And a standard account can do everything the Edge of Darkness account can do so it's not necessary to get it if you don't want to or you can't afford it. The Escape from Tarkov is made by Battlestate Games, a Russian game company. The game is still in beta but it runs very smooth. It runs like an optimized game. So when you first load the game for the first time, you're going to be given the option to join two factions. This is called your PMC. You're either going to choose a Yusek or a Bear. Yusek is American. Bear is Russian. There's different voice lines in the game. It just depends if you want to hear English or Russian. Right now, there's really no difference. The only difference it makes in the game at this current time is there's a map called Lighthouse. There's rogues. They will aggro the bears instantly. The Yuseks can kind of roam around freely. Eventually, they'll start getting shot at once you're in a certain area. It's kind of hard to explain. I don't need to get much into detail. I don't want to confuse you guys. Basically, American, Russian, look at it that way. Whichever one you want. You choose a face and a voice line that you guys want, and then you're set on your way to the main screen. So this right here is the main Escape from Tarkov screen. The first thing you want to familiarize yourself with is SCAV and PMC. So we're going to click Escape from Tarkov. As you can see on the left, you have a SCAV. On the right, you have a PMC. Basically, to break this down for you, SCAV is essentially a free loadout where the game just gives you a random set of gear that you go in with. There will be other player SCAVs and there will be NPC SCAVs as well. These are your friends. You don't want to shoot them. There is a SCAV reputation. So killing too many SCAVs will be bad for you, especially later on. I'll get into that later. If you're a SCAV and you see a PMC, you can kill a PMC that actually helps you get more SCAV rep. But getting into the game, I would recommend running SCAV as much as you can. This will help you get better at the game, understand the movement, the settings things like that and it's very low risk since it's giving you a free loadout and you're not losing anything but there is a scav cooldown timer it's like 15 to 20 minutes i believe so you're not going to be able to run this back to back to back to back constantly but there are ways to decrease that timer we'll get into that later then there's your pmc this is your main character this is your character that you're going to be leveling up leveling skills with doing tasks quests things like that this is what actually matters this is how you progress further into the game now if we go back go to the character this right here is your gear tab on the right side as you can see is your stash this is where you store all of your stuff at on the left side is where you have all your gear for your main pmc i have an upgraded version of the game so my stash size will be a lot bigger than yours most likely on the left side here we have different tabs these kind of help organize your stash a little bit help you locate things based on what the tab is at the bottom you can automatically sort your stash this will kind of make your stash a little bit neater then on the left side this again like i said is where you gear up everything you put onto these slots is what you're going to be taking into raid to help you fight and kill other players scavs things like that the bottom left you can see that there is a weight system so if i took off this gun right here you could see that i'm now 19 kilograms where when I have it on, I'm 24. That yellow is indicating that I'm overweight. So the more weight that you have on your body, the less stamina you'll have, the less endurance you'll have. You won't be able to run as far, things like that. Now, over time, you could passively level this stuff. We could carry more weight, have more strength, endurance. We'll get into that soon. So this 440 right here is actually your health. So if we go to the health tab, we can see that we have a total of 440 HP divided between all of our limbs. We'll come back to this very soon. Down here is your water consumption and your energy. So running a lot, doing a lot of actions, jumping, things like that. If you get shot, there's different things that can cause your food and hunger to go down. It's a good idea to bring in some water or food with you into raid. You could also find food and water in raid as well. But this right here is your secured container. The default game, you'll start with a two by two. It's called an alpha container. I have the highest edition of the game. So this is what you get, a gamma container. So if I was to go into raid with my PMC with all this gear on, if I died, I would lose every single thing in all these slots. Besides your knife, you never lose your knife, things that are in that slot. And the same thing with items in your gamma container. So there are keys in this game. There's a variety of different maps. 
and there's a lot of rooms with a lot of good loot. Some have quest items locked behind them. So you have to find keys and raid or buy them or buy them from a trader or buy them on the flea market. So of course you don't want to lose your keys every time you go into raid and die. So that's something that you'd put in your gamma container here. You'd put your keys. I have heals right here. We'll get into heals very soon. But basically I always put my keys and my heals in my gamma. That way if I die, I don't have to replenish my heals every time I go back into raid. Now up top left here is an overall tab. As you can see, I'm level six. I haven't played too much this wipe. I've only done 10 raids. This is your overall stats for this wipe. This right here is the amount of hours you have on your account. This is the only thing that doesn't ever get reset. And what I mean by that is Escape from Tarkov has wipes. So every six months or so, the game completely wipes back to everyone being level one and you start from scratch again. You may be thinking, oh, that's terrible. I don't like that. But in all reality, it's actually really good for the game. It keeps the game not being stuck style also you're watching this video because you're a newer player or trying to get into the game if you were to get into the game right now and everybody's wearing the best armor using the best guns using the best ammo you'd be going in not knowing what you're doing and you would never be able to get a good start you'd always be getting killed by the best players so this kind of allows everyone to start from the same level and that's generally when you see the most amount of population and player base on the game active at once it's a lot of fun on wipe days and you'll know when there's a wipe coming up they kind of hint at it and there's usually a week of events right before the wipe so this overall tab resets every single wipe other than your besides your total hours played and this right here are your statistics fun little stats that you can see is very in depth could be a little bit better but the most part provides a lot more than most games do now if we go back to the health as you can see in escape from tarkov if you were to get shot in the leg there is a good chance that you get a fracture which means you'll start limping so you might need to use a splint to heal your fractured leg also if your leg gets half shot out and it's 35 out of 65 you're actually able to heal that back up there's bleeding mechanics you can bleed to death it doesn't happen instantly it happens over a long period of time for for the most time it depends how much you got shot but this is one of my favorite things about this game most games it's just you get shot and it's just a general heal but this getting shot in certain locations you're able to actually heal your stuff back up so i'll show you some heals that are in the game for example this right here is an ai2 most people will just call this cheese because it looks like a slice of cheese this gives you a total of 100 hp but as you can see it doesn't stop bleeding so that's when you would need a bandage. This would stop a light bleeding. Later on into the game, when you've got a little bit more stuff, you can get things such as an IFAC. This stops light bleeds and a heavy bleed. This will take a chunk out of the total dura of the IFAC. So this is 300 HP. If you were to heal something for a light bleed, it would take 30 HP out. It would take 210 HP out for a heavy bleed. So that's where you'd want to rock something bigger like this, or maybe bringing in a hemostat that stops heavy bleeds, tourniquets, stop heavy bleeds so there's a lot of different healing items in the game as you can see i use a grizzly a lot of times in my secured container because this actually stops light bleeds heavy bleeds and it removes fractures and there's other benefits as well with that now let's say you get shot in the arm and it's zero out of 60 that's what we call blacked out my arms blacked out my legs blacked out you'll hear that term back in the day you were never able to heal this and technically you still can't but they have made these two items called a CMS kit and a serve 12. If any of your limbs other than your head and your thorax, you can't fix these if they're blacked out. But any of these other bottom ones, if these get blacked out, you could actually restore these limbs. They won't be full HP, so it won't be 60 out of 60 ever again. But if you were to use a CMS, this would probably bring this down to half, maybe actually a little less than half. So it would be one out of 15. Then you'd be able to heal that arm back up to 15 HP. But if you were to use the serve 12, it restores it a little bit better. So you might be able to get this arm back to like 30, 45, a total max HP like that. So that's what these two kits are meant for. So these right here are your skills. Most of the time, you're going to be passively leveling these. You can target farm these essentially. So if you wanted to level your strength up, you could target that and specifically level that. But for the most part, you're just going to be leveling these up passively as you play. And as a new player, I wouldn't focus anything about this. Just kind of play the game. And over time, these will 
automatically be leveling up later on when you know what you're doing and you want to specifically farm one of these to level up you can go on the wiki and they'll give you an explanation on how to level these for example endurance you level endurance up by running underweight and you level your strength up by being overweight and then they give you a whole bunch of different perks as you could read by just these little squares above the actual stat but that's basically a skills tab maps nobody uses maps in this game not the in-game maps at least they're useless i'll link down a link in the description of what maps i use most of them are interactive very user friendly these will help you with your tasks locating extracts loot spots and other hot points like that we'll get into that later and this right here is your tasks so there's traders in the game and they'll give you tasks that you need to complete this is just one way of being able to locate and see these tasks Otherwise, we go back to the main menu and go to trading. These are all the main traders right here. If we just go to Prapper, for example, you can buy from these traders. So there's two ways of kind of obtaining things from traders. One is purchasing them with currency. Not all the traders use the same currency, but for the most part, you can purchase rubles, which is the main currency with all the other with all the traders. And then another option is bartering. So in raid, you can find this horse and this D cleaner and you can trade that for this gun. There's a lot of different barter trades like that. So for example, we have this gun right here that we could buy with rubles. Then we have this gun right here that we would have to barter. We would need two MP-133 shotguns and you'd be able to trade it. Also, there's a sell tab so you can go through and sell your different items. Each traders will accept different things and they may give you more value for certain items over other traders. That will just come with playing the game and experience. And then this right here is the tasks. You really wanna focus these this is what levels you up the fastest except the task and there is a wiki that i'll link down below in the description that will in depth tell you everything you need to do instead of having to read this and kind of being confused on what they're trying to tell you to do this right here is an easy task so this is super straightforward i need to kill just five scavs all over any map and then i need to obtain two of these shotguns then you'll be able to come trade it in boom you're good to go all of my traders level one as i said i haven't played too much this wipe but the max level that you can get on every single trader is level four besides fence fence will always be level one you're almost never going to trade with him he's a scammer pretty much everything he sells is overpriced and then you're never going to get any task with him either well that's not true uh there's an item at the end of the game called kappa and once you complete every single task in the game he'll give you a task you have to find every single streamer item in the game and turn it into him and he'll give you the biggest size container secure container in the game it's called a kappa container other than that you don't really ever want to buy or sell from him but to level these up basically if you look at the top right here to get to the next level if i wanted to get therapist for example for a level two i would need to reach level 13 I would need 0.20 reputation with her and I would need to spend 400,000 rubles with her. If I go to tasks, I, I started with 0.15 because I have the edge of darkness edition. If you start on a standard account, you get zero reputation with them. That's kind of just one of the bonuses of having the highest edition in the game. But as you can see right here, my rewards for completing this task, therapist, I would get 0.03 reputation. So that would get me closer to 0.20. Then after the next task that I do with her, I would probably reach 0.20. And then I would just have to spend enough with her. So for example, I'm going to go here right now. My total spent is 40.7 thousand. Notice that it's 40K. It's now up to 57K. So you basically just need to sell enough to get to 400,000. Also just buying stuff from her works exactly the same. I'll buy five of these 42,000. That's 57,000 went to 100K. So just doing transactions with any of the traders We'll get that money up as you can see we just went from 40k to 100k like it was nothing i can sell all this stuff and as you play longer as you can see i can make hundreds of thousands of rubles right now with a lot of these items in my stash so getting this up is not a problem and also the last thing is sometimes when you're buying ammo i can't show you right now because i'm not leveled up but there is a global limit a lot of ammos and things like that later into the game there's a global limit so they might only stock say a hundred thousand rounds and then everyone collectively also purchasing them as those get bought within this timer right here this resets every like i think two hours three hours something like that once that limit of supply is completely purchased up you can't purchase it again until this timer runs all the way down and resets again so be aware of global restocks and limits and stuff like that then once you hit level 15 you'll be able to unlock the flea market this is where other players like you will list their items for sale 
but you're only allowed to sell found and raid items. So for example, this magazine right here is found and raid. I know because there's a little check mark. If you double click it, there's another check mark right there that says item found in raid. Basically how that works is going into a raid and surviving your items are found in raid that you find in raid. So like if I take this gun right now that I own and take it into raid, when I leave with it, it's not found in raid because I went in with that. So this item right here, I found this in raid. I survived with it. It's found in raid. Now, if I took this and put it into my tactical rig and I went into raid with it, as soon as I enter the raid, this check mark is no longer found in raid. So only found in raid items can be posted on the flea market. So if you find a really expensive item in game and you wanna sell it, you know you wanna sell it, you might wanna leave before you die and it's not worth anything anymore. You could still vendor these items to the traders, but most of the time you're gonna be losing a lot of value. So now you know how the flea market works essentially. Next up, we have the hideout. As you can see, my hideout is not leveled up right now. I'll probably put something on the screen to show you what a max hideout looks like. There's many pros to having a max hideout. You get a shooting range where you're able to test out your guns before you go into raid with it. There's a Bitcoin mine, which produces passive income, basically just making Bitcoin, which sell for a lot of money. There's little crafts that you can make inside of the hideout in different stations. You can craft meds, tools, ammo, guns, magazines, armors, backpacks, pretty much anything. And everything that you craft in the hideout is found in raid items it just works like that so if you wanted to you could sell it or you could use them for tasks some tasks require items to be found in raid where others don't leveling up your intelligence center will actually decrease your scav timer so if you're someone that loves playing scav a lot leveling up your intelligence center might be something you might want to do as i said it reduces the time on scav so now I kind of want to show you guys how kitting up works. You can control left click and alt left click to put on and off items. So to put on items, it's alt left click and then to take off is control left click. Now, obviously there's armors that are better than other armors. For example, this right here is a trooper. Armor points is 85. So that's basically the Dura that you have. They protect different areas and the armor class is different as well. And most armors, most of the time will change and decrease your movement speed, your turning speed, ergonomics, all of that. Different armors are made out of different materials. You may think, why does that matter? It does because it depends how much Dura gets taken when you're getting shot. Also, when you're repairing armor, there is a repairability function in this game. Certain armors, if they get shot up too much, it costs way too much to repair. A lot of times it's just worth just getting rid of. An armor of that, for example, is a gazelle. It's made out of like ceramic or something weird like that. And it just doesn't repair well. So this is a level four armor class. This is a level three armor class. This is a level two armor class. As you see all different armor points. This packer right here covers your thorax and your stomach. This covers your thorax and your stomach. And this covers just your thorax. So if you go to the health, you can kind of see what your thorax is, what your stomach is. It's kind of complicated. I don't want to confuse you guys. I, that's, I don't want to get too much in depth with that. I can make a separate video on that. If you guys want, just leave a comment down below. Basically, there's different armor classes. The highest armor class you can get is level six. The higher the armor class, the better it is at stopping bullets. And we'll get into ballistics and ammo very soon. So now onto helmets. This is an armor class three with a high ricochet chance. Obviously the highest you can get is level six for armor class, but this is actually good because the ricochet chance is high. That's pretty much all you're looking for. You wanna be careful with what helmet you get, not that it's too big of a deal, but this helmet right here actually covers your ears, but not all helmets will cover your ears. So for example, this right here, you can tell a big difference. This covers your ear, this doesn't. So sometimes getting shot right here is a big, big, big game changer, you know? But they do make some attachments like this side armor to put onto your helmet. As you see, these have mounts. There are night vision. So you could put a night vision mount on both of these helmets. Not all helmets are going to have that. Now there's headphones in this game. This kind of helps um, picking up footsteps and different sounds. This is something that's like, again, it's a whole separate video. It's kind of complicated. I don't want to confuse you guys, but the point is there are headsets. There's a whole variety. As you can see, I have right here alone, just quite a different amount, you know, getting down to it also is personal preference. A lot of the times, some people will only wear contacts. Some people are only wear razors. Some people only wear sword ends. personal preference. You kind of have to just wear it and figure out what you like. Some, some headphones bring out the bass in the audio some have more some are more treble mid-tones things like that so you kind of have to mess around and experience it for yourself 
but some helmets you can wear headphones with such as these but these headphones i can't because i'm wearing this ear attachment now that i took it off i could wear that and then there's helmets like these where you can't wear headphones with either so this helmet right here you could actually apply a ballistic face shield on there also with the kiver that's what this slot right there is for you can put a face shield on this and it's actually pretty good makes your screen a little bit more like uh trash looking you know because it's kind of realistic and it looks like there's like scratches and stuff on the face shield but it will save your life from uh low penetration rounds uh certain shotgun shells a lot of pistol rounds so sometimes it's definitely worth wearing kind of depends what map you're going on because if you're fighting raiders bosses they'll one tap you no matter what helmet you have on again that comes with just experience and then there's also some helmets where you can wear headphones face shield ear protection and ear covers such as the team wendy x fill but that's a little complicated i'm getting into stuff that doesn't really matter too much for you beginners but the point is helmets armors they both have a armor class to them there's headphones that you now understand a little bit more about so as you can see i have a body armor on well we're gonna need something to carry our attachments and stuff like that so we're gonna need to get ourselves a chest rig perfect we have two rounds or two magazines already in the rig so this is basically we're gonna be putting your magazines if you go into raid and you find loot you can obviously fold this up with loot and grenades we're gonna put inside of our pockets if you had your magazines and your grenades in your backpack, if you went to reload, it doesn't reload because it's in your backpack. If you went to throw a grenade, it's not going to throw a grenade because it's not in your pockets. You could put grenades in your chest rig or in your pockets and they cannot be in your backpack. They won't work like that. So make sure that your grenades are always in your pockets or your rig and that your magazines are also in your pockets or your rig. For example, an SVD. You can put this in your pockets because it's a smaller magazine if you're using a gun such as an sks i don't know if this is the actual ammo type but you would basically put the ammo in your pockets yeah it's not the same ammo type but you'd put the ammo in your pockets and then when you reload it it would just pull like the rounds from your pockets into the gun automatically it would top feed them because you can do that with the sks you can uh top feed that gun hopefully that made sense you understand that so now with ammo there's a lot of stats for ammo as well now i don't have the flea market unlocked on this account but if i wanted to find ammo for this magazine which is basically this gun i would right click this and hit link search and it would show up all the weapons that are compatible with that magazine so now i can buy any of these guns because they work with the magazine and then here's all the ammo that is also compatible with the magazine. So I don't have all these unlocked, but I'll leave a ballistics chart down below in the description. And you guys can see what the best ammo is ranked in each category, caliber. Some ammo like this will reduce the recoil in your gun, allowing you to be more accurate. But some rounds may have more heat buildup, which may have a chance to make your gun jam. That is a thing in this game. Some rounds may be high in flesh damage, but not in penetration, whereas other rounds are high in penetration being able to shoot through those level six armor classes but then if you shoot somebody in the body the flesh damage just isn't as good so trying to find that balance or depending on what you're looking for depending on what map you're doing what kind of raid you're trying to do if you're killing raiders if you're killing bosses if you're killing players on labs which is the best map in the game where everyone takes in the best loot and armors and guns stuff like that or if you're just casually playing doing a quest you don't really care you're just bringing something that can kill people you'll understand as you play now the last thing i want to tell you about the rigs is say for example all these magazines i'm putting in here just imagine this is loot so say these are like two slot items of loot right if i went to reload this i could reload my gun but since i don't have a free slot in my chest rig the magazine in my gun is going to drop on the ground and i'm going to be losing that magazine so typically a rule of thumb full like this you want to just leave one slot open for the magazine in your gun to swap out with with the magazine in your chest rig now again the same thing i told you with not putting your magazines in your backpack you can do the same thing with your heels you can actually keep buying these so i usually put like my heels on four and then i would have a morphine which is essentially a painkiller you could also take this and drag it down to the fifth slot so again i don't expect you to know what all this is but basically 
there's going to be painkillers. So if you do get a fracture, if you do get your leg shot out, you're gonna be limping. By taking a painkiller, it'll allow you to walk again. But a lot of times I like to put a Salua in my chest rig, a morphine or a propitol in my pocket and use that four or five. And then you could put splints in there. You could put whatever med items you want. You know, I have my setup down here. I have a certain way of running the things I wanna do. But if you're running, instead of having to open up your inventory and then right click to use or having to use this, you could be running, press four, heal and keep moving to a safer spot while you're getting shot in the back or whatever. Now, the thing in Escape from Tarkov that is really nice is you can completely customize your gun unlike any other game you've played before, I almost guarantee it. There's thousands of attachments. This right here is basically how I customize this. Tons and tons of different rails, mounts, foregrips, pistol grips, stocks, optics, sights, flashlights, rails, barrels, handguards, everything. Multiple different magazines for each gun, different uppers and lower receivers, different gas blocks, all of that. You can really get in depth with all this stuff. You just pull it off and you can replace it. This right here is red, which just means the gun is not able to be, it's not functionable because it's missing the handguard, of course. But you could right click this if you wanted to and you could disassemble. So again, I literally have the lower receiver <laughs> In the upper receiver now uh, and you can literally build this gun from scratch all the attachments went up here so that's something really cool in this game that you can do then you could also edit presets save them really get into depth with them and for those gun enthusiasts it's very fun and entertaining when it comes to grenades there's a lot of different grenades as well i have a video that you can watch i'll link that down below it covers all the grenades there's different fuse times explosion radius shrapnel count all that stuff this looks like a typical kit that i would rock i have my helmet i have my armor a gun I got two magazines typically what i would do is i would bring like two or three and then you just take the spare ammo and you could put it in your pouch so like if you go through all these mags mid raid you can pack a mag and basically replenish your magazine. How you set up your secure container is completely up to you and I'd be ready to go into right now. Also, before we get into that, I do wanna show you though, instead of rocking a body armor and a chest rig like that, they do make tactical rigs that are armored. So this right here is an AVS rig. So instead of wearing body armor, you can't wear body armor and an armored chest rig at the same time. So you could either wear body armor with a tactical rig, or you just wear a tactical rig that has plates in them, which is, got, you know what I mean, it's got armor in them. It's a level four armor class, 70 Dura. It's got a lot of slots, which are nice. So you can kind of choose whether you want to do the armor and the rig, or just the armored rig. Now it's time to get into raid. We're gonna go to Escape from Tarkov, PMC. That's what we want to level up. And we're gonna pick the map. So factory, is the only map that has like a static time always they have day and night it's simple they make it easy it's the smallest map in the game but for every other map as you can see well all the maps they're, they're the same in terms of the time but these times fluctuate so this right here if you went at 56 a.m or whatever that is that eu military bullshit time this would be pitch black this right here is noon so this is like 1 1 p.m this would be bright out, it'd be nice. So it gets dark around like 10 p.m. and it gets bright around 6 a.m. So if you're going on a night raid and you have night vision, aim for like midnight to like 3 a.m. And if you go into a night raid not prepared, you're not gonna be able to see anything. So just be careful what time you're picking. You wanna make sure you're going in the middle of the day. So 1300, I'm just gonna pick customs. There is an offline mode, you can practice, do all that junk. I wouldn't worry about that. Then this is the insurance screen. You could get insurance through Prapper therapist his return time is 24 hours to 36 hours that's real life time therapist her time is usually smaller i don't know why it hasn't changed but it's usually 10 to like 16 hours or something like that now basically how insurance works you can insure these items this would cost me 24,000 rubles there we go return time is 10 to 20 hours where proper is 24 to 36 
you are paying a little bit more for therapist but basically how this works if you insure your items and you go into raid and you die as long as a pmc or a player scav doesn't come in and take those items you will get those items back within the time they tell you right there so if you go in and you don't insure anything and you die you're not getting there's no chance you ever see those items again but if you insure your items you go in and you die but you're in a safe spot and no one and no one gets a chance to loot you or they don't have room to take your stuff or they just don't want your stuff and they just leave it there you will get those items back there also is like a insurance fraud thing that people will do we'll just make it simple just say for example you killed two people and they both had the exact same two guns you had i could take my insured gun and throw that into a bush because it's insured and I know that I will get it back because I'm throwing it in a spot no one's ever going to look and then I can take their loot and get out. So that's something that happens quite often. Take the loot of people that you killed and get your insured items later on. That's something you can do or you can just say screw it and take their items, take your insured gear, extract and keep all your stuff and put it back into your stash. It's up to you how you want to do that. So this right here is how you basically play with other people. All these people are looking for a group. You can do the same by hitting start looking for a group. If someone wanted to play with me, they would invite me. Uh, if you have a friend added on your friends list, as long as you guys are in here together, you can refresh this, the, the lobby and it would say friend right here. You would invite your friend, you'd click it, invite to group, you would join your group, you would ready up and you'd get to playing. To add somebody as a friend, you go to the main menu and you go to messenger and you click friends. And then up here, you search friend, like you just search for whoever you want and then you'll find your friend here. Just click his name, add him as a friend. Boom, you're good to go. And basically, you go into the raid, do the tasks that you want to do. You could PVP, kill other players, steal their loot, take it back to your stash. You can go on a loot run. You can just look for loot and then you're going to want to find an extract. So as soon as you get into the raid, it'll tell you right on your screen what your extract is the more you play you'll never need to look at a map to know where your extract is you'll just remember it where you spawn you'll know where your extract is without even needing to know where the extract is this game is all about experience and just playing it but essentially you're going to get into the raid do what you need to do and when you leave you're just going to go to the extract the extract point you're going to hover in that area for like five seconds and then your screen will go black it'll show you the stats it'll show you all the people that you killed that raid it will give you some other stats whatever and then you're good and you're back to the main screen you could depot all your loot you could swap your armor out do whatever you want and then rinse and repeat so that's basically escape from tarkov in a nutshell try to keep it short for you guys hope you guys appreciate it if you guys did please leave a thumbs up subscribe if you're new i'll see you guys next time peace